I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Spear sails the sea with radar sweeping wide, catching whispers of ships on the opposing side. Guns aligned, torpedoes prime, ready for the show. Through billowing smoke, her deadly dance does flow. Spear, queen of the northern deep, silent in a hunt, her enemies weep with a burst of guns and torpedoes that glide. She claims the waves with power and pride. Hey, this is Ripper here. You guys are doing fantastic today. You got a fun video with a Svea, if that's pronounced it correctly. Svea, it's really awesome. The uh, new Swedish, European slash, uh, yeah, I think it's Swedish, but it's a European. But it's the, a new European cruiser. And boom, look at that right off the bat kill. We'll talk about that, man. This thing is a beast. And TLDR, I love this thing. This spring is literally the bigger brother to Ragnar. But as always, before we begin, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support of the channel. On our way to uh, 4,000 subs, at that, we're going to do another premium giveaway. And we can't thank you guys enough, as always, building a better community and learning something at the same time. So let's get to it. This is Vea, Tier 10, European, uh, cruiser slash uh, destroyer. And I went, if I had to sum it up, this is the bigger bro brother Ragnar that I've always wanted. I mean, this thing, look at the size of it. It's still this kind of the similar size of a light cruiser, but almost just borderline destroyer-like. Just look at it. It just looks like a destroyer. My gosh. And it performs miraculously. And here you go. You can see some of the power right here where we have literally um, radar, and we have the ability to a 9-kilometer radar lasting for about 20-ish sections. 20-ish sections? 25 seconds, I believe. I'll take a look at it again. Let me take a look. Sorry for that little lag right there. Yeah, it lasts, if you build for it, 19.8 seconds. So, 19.8 second radar that goes out to nine kilometers, kind of like the Gdansk style. You have the Ragnar guns that you're seeing in the background shooting right here. And right there, you got 152 millimeters, 900 meters per second, 30 millimeter um, penetration, and 11% fire chance. So you're doing really, really good. You can even do depth charges for the submarines, anti-submarine warfare. And this thing, uh, finally, it's like a Ragnar having that anti-submarine warfare rather than driving over a target, which I hate. I'd rather just have the freaking, uh, like right there, you see me hitting those uh, submarine chargers right there. I love it. And now you're seeing the bread and butter of this thing where you literally are just firing from long range from downtown. And look, ooh, look at that nice dodging with the engine boost as well. That's what Ragnar is good for, juking. And you also have smoke. Yes, you have the British style smoke right here. You can see it right there. Cooldown is 66 seconds and it's lasting for 40 seconds and they're quick. So that's the thing I love about this thing. This thing is awesome. The fact that this is what Ragnar always wanted and uh, for my play style. And look at the gun angles that I'm shooting at. These are literally ridiculous gun angles. Maybe I can show a depiction on the screen right here showing you what kind of ridiculous gun angles you have. I believe it's in the 20 degree-ish uh, range, which is perfect. So you can angle a lot. Now, the downside is you do have a Citadel. And that's why the gun angles are really, really important. So you can angle away, still fire, and you can mitigate as much damage as possible uh, regarding uh, the Citadel because there is a Citadel. I'll throw a, um, a picture up on the screen. In Splash 2, right off the bat there, Alpha Flank Secure, blowing everybody up. Now we're going to take on the Submarine and the Destroyer as well. So, man, this thing, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say, but this thing is, it looks and is classified as a cruiser. But man, you can play this thing like a destroyer, especially with the quick smoke screen that allows you to do that. You got quick speed. I mean, when you're going to see later when I get this engine boost up, which lasts 30 plus 30 percent, it's kind of like the Ragnar engine boost or even the small engine boost. And it literally lasts uh, 66 seconds, but you are going a top speed of 46 knots. Pretty darn incredible if you build for it right now. I'm not sure why the recording is being weird like this. Maybe we just did an update, so it's probably uh, doing that. So I'm forgive me if you can see the uh, Haraguma there just being weird anyways front gun is three barrels so now the, the accuracy i've noticed is not as good as was as i would say the ragnar elbing or along those kind of big destroyer lines but it's decent it does the dispersion is as you can see right there just watch the video you can see what kind of dispersion you're getting so you're kind of getting that wonky cruiser dispersion that is not super accurate like a destroyer ragnar but it's there just enough to get some damage on there on target but you're really 
my, primarily you're shooting at big um, superstructures and big uh, battleships and cruisers. That's your bread and butter right there. And then you, you kind of su supplement that um, hunter, killer, destroyer role uh, pretty darn well as well. I mean, you have three sets of Ragnar guns and a three barrel in front. So really darn awesome. Like, finally, look at this. I'm dropping depth charges as a bigger brother Ragnar on submarines and boom. You, and here's the trick here. Drop one at a time. Wait for that uh, black smoke right there as you can see the black oil slick that is. See, when you see black oil slick, that's when you drop it. So many players I see drop two at a time and then you're waiting on cooldown. No, no. What I learned from a bunch of guys on YouTube, drop one, make the guy get his oil slick on the surface. Now you can track it and then drop the next one and start another oil slick. And that's how you track the submarine one at a time. I hate submarines and I'm trying to help you guys kill submarines better don't drop all your depth charges all at once do it slow roll slow picking so that you can find uh, that submarine and keep that oil slick on the surface anyways back to uh so yeah look at the reload 3.9 and it goes down another 10 percent as you if you build for the commander that i do if you get it within his de my detection range which is pretty darn decent 9.3 that's great and now i got the engine boost going i'm speeding up look at this it's going up let's see the engine the speed is 46 knots look at that 46 knots boom i wait a few seconds to get within range of them and then i pop the radar which lasts about 19.8 just enough time for me to get a lot of shots on them look at these angles this gun angle right here that's about 20 something six, uh degrees and boom i'm getting all three guns on board and all you got to do is look lead them a little bit let walk the shells there's so many shells in the air a lot of ragnar shells my gosh you get a couple in the area, boom, there he goes, splash, three, he goes down. And we literally wiped out an entire flank with a Sevilla, the tier 10 borderline destroyer slash cruiser, because just look at the darn thing, the crew, the size of this thing. I mean, look at it. It literally is almost comparable to maybe just a little bit bigger than the Ragnar. And man, this is awesome. The only downside is it does have a Citadel. So what you're going to take, I'm going to actually take a look at this. You're going to see a shot from the Ohio that's coming up here. And you're gonna see like what kind of, uh, you know, damage that does to us. You gotta be very careful how to play it. How I would play it is, you know, literally uh, make sure you have that engine boost in the background when you need to start juking and dodging shells. And when you just can't handle uh, handle the firepower and take too much, uh, you can pop smoke as a last resort. And of course you got the radar to handle the destroyer. Uh, I mean, this thing literally takes on everybody. It can take on the cruisers, battleships. Uh, it's, you saw submarines now, and it can even handle on its own destroyer players. I think they can take us on. So. That, that radar, man, I think this is almost borderline OP because you have the co smoke radar combo, which everybody hates. I know that. The Black, uh, the, uh, what is it, Gdansk, Kazit, the, there's one more destroyer, I believe, that may have it. Uh, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong. But now you got Savea. Savea is literally kind of like you're playing a destroyer uh, with smoke radar combo, which is pretty darn ridiculous. I mean, if this was a long, uh, the detectability was bigger and like that of a cruiser, bigger cruiser than maybe. But, okay, look at that shot from the Ohio right there. Look at it. Look at it. Boom. He hits us right on the nose. He overmatches everything. And that is that kind of damage you don't want to take. But you got to be careful there. But it's okay. We're here to absorb the damage. And you can always slow down, pop smoke, and go undetected. So those are the mitigating things I would do in this thing. But look at the gun angles, man. This thing is awesome. You can really dodge and juke shells really well. You can angle. It does a great job. And boom, there it goes. Ohio goes down. And we secure the entire area. Look, we're treating this thing like literally a destroyer. And I love it. This thing is um, just a bigger brother Ragnar, if I had to sum it up. I mean, this thing really is a powerful combination. It is available in the Armory for Steel. Uh, it's like a little expensive. I believe it's about 30000 If you have a coupon, maybe you can get it down a little bit uh, more, lower than that. But it was definitely worth it. I mean, look at the gun reload. 3.7 gun reload. Oh, we forgot to talk about the torpedoes. Torpedoes, 86 knots, going to 13.5 kilometers, maximum damage 10,700, and a great reload time, 66 seconds. So it is phenomenal. Uh, this thing does it all. This is probably my new favorite cruiser slash destroyer. Uh, next to maybe like the Ragnar and Gdansk. This thing literally is that powerful. So uh, we win this match overall. I mean, let's take a look at the um, uh, the battle statistics before I go into uh, the uh, the next video. Look at that. Three kills. You're going to see me start a lot of fire. You start a lot of fires in this thing. Okay. It's pretty darn top of the team right there. Very good. Uh, we had our other Ragnar player in there. I said it was a, this is the bigger brother Ragnar. Haragumo taken down. Mecklenburg burned to crap. Uh, Brendan Izzy gone, and we took out some Destroyer and some Ohio gameplay right there. So you can see this thing. But don't, this, this game doesn't really reflect what it could do if I had more things to shoot at, but you're going to watch. Watch this next battle, even though there are losses, but do you uh, just watch amount of firepower and the distraction that it can cause and, and, and what kind of devastation it will cause to a flank. So let's take a look at it. All right, so let's take another look at the video on Okinawa with the Sevea. It's tier 10, the uh, 
Bigger Brother Ragnar. So let's take a look at this battle. Okay, so this is going to be a loss anyways, but just look at the just the amount of punishment. This thing can just dish out and take as well. And I can see how super annoying this can be. And forgive me, this is the um, first game I played with it uh, without any of the uh, Aslane mods, whatever. So it might look kind of uh, weird and funky. Uh, the last game you saw was um, had all the mods, so I had to reload it and install it. So here we go. But anyways... How how would again? How would I play this thing? I'm actually playing this up close and personal because um, I can I have the radar. I'm not afraid of any destroyers, so I've got radar. I can go toe to toe and look. Here's a shot from the Alsace. You can slam on the brakes, go hard left or hard right, whatever your heart's content, and boom, you can dodge shells with with ease because of the range. I mean, anything out past 12 kilometers is really difficult to hit, and especially the size of this ship is literally kind of like a bigger Ragnar. It doesn't. It doesn't look or act like a cruiser. It just feels. I mean, I literally was just treating this thing like a destroyer. And look, I'm I'm kind of this angle, this crazy angle, uh, about 26 ish or 30 degrees, and I got all the guns to bear. I pop smoke and I'm concealed. So that's this is powerful. Look, you're starting fire now. Notice how many fires we start. This thing this is ridiculous. I do. Let me take a look at the stats again. It's 11 percent chance fire. I mean. You can dish out so much hate and so much punishment, and you got the smoke, the quick smokes, like the daring smokes of the British smoke style. That is, I think this complements the ship very, very well, especially for a destroyer kind of mentality player. We can still get hit by those deep water torpedoes, so that's a little dangerous right there. But again, you're nosed into it, so it, you're kind of mitigated on that. And the Yu Yang, right, pop the radar, boom, he's spotted right off the bat. Because I'm spotted, now here's the downside. I forgot to, I, and I was like, look to my left. I have another Sevilla, and it also says, bam, he slaps me, and that's exactly the downside of this ship. Like, you, you just got to be very, very careful because you do have a Citadel now. But the look at the reload, down to 3.2 seconds right there. Getting shot out like everybody's literally going, oh, my gosh, a Sevilla, new ship, whatever. What is this thing? Let's all take a shot up. We're already up to 1, 1 million damage or 1 million potential damage right there, guys. Look, look, that's just within the first four and a half minutes of the game. And that's why this thing is so, so deadly, because everybody wants to shoot at it. Everybody knows how, or maybe some people don't even know what this thing is, but it just looks new, and it's deadly. It's firing from smoke. It's got a lot of fire starting capability, and people just want to erase you off the map. So this thing is going to be a punching bag, and it's great. And the cool thing is because the size of it, uh, it literally is almost the size of the Ragnar, and it, it it handles like it, too. It's fast. I mean, even with the engine boost, you saw how I got up to 46 knots. It is a little sluggish on the acceleration side of it, so I did did propulsion mod. So that's the best I could get out of it. It doesn't accelerate like a destroyer, but it's still nimble enough, and it still feels maneuverable en enough for the turns, the ability, what I have to do for it. It does still feel kind of like that light cruiser and slash bigger destroyer uh, role. So... Uh, yeah, I do like the maneuverability of it. I think it's very comfortable for what I have to do. A lot of it's kiting away, running away, nose in, kiting, because now you have the smoke. It gives you that uh, a flexibility to actually nose in and stop rather than kiting and turning away. And then the range of the guns is very, very acceptable for me. I like it, 15.2 kilometers. You can go further out if you want it to, if you want to build for it. I like the gun reload. I think this is a comfortable range for me. Again, it's a lot, it's a decent range that it makes it hard for guys like the Colombo here to take a shot at. Now, he's driving in. I do not want to be caught in a sap uh, broadside shot from him, so we're going to pop smoke right there. We're in concealment right now and we still have a nine kilometer radar in case we need to spot and just look at the amount of firepower we're going to be dishing out another fire right there again a lot of great superstructure hits right here they're very uh this it feels very easy and accurate enough for me to hit bigger ships and i feel that is very very comfortable for in that regard i almost want to say this is kind of like borderline smolens kind of mentality where you're in smoke and just uh, spamming he and farming this might be one of those other contenders as being another toxic, broken OP ship because you're in smoke, firing 30 mil pin armoring shells, and your concealment's down to 9.3 with 9-kilometer radar, mind you, and you got torpedoes, and ASW is great. The engine booths, um, I might need to do a few more videos showing the juking ability of this thing. I think it is a very powerful contender for the amount of gun angles you get with in conjunction with the engine boost, which lasts... Uh, a decent amount of time for what you need to do. Similar along the line, uh, the, the play style of Ragnar. And there it is, more uh, you know, torpedo hits right there. And look at the torpedo angles and the reload. The torpedo reloads at 54 seconds right now, which is incredible. Ranging out to 13.5 and 86 knots, giving you a 7.8 second re uh, reaction time. Well, you're talking about like Holland style reaction times here, which is really, really good. 
And even if you got a runaway, you still got the back two turrets like having a Ragnar in the back of your ship. And that's freaking incredible. And you got the three barrel gun in front. So this thing, man, this thing's got it all. I, I do, like I have to say, and the gun turrets are 360. So this thing has it all. I like this ship a lot. Um, this might be, I dare to say it, this might be, might be my new destroyer, bigger destroyer gun role play because even though it's labeled as a cruiser, this thing performs like a destroyer. In the last one you saw, I was capping uh, caps with this thing. It's incredible. Very, very strong, very powerful. And you can see right there, gun turret in the front is rotating with us. 360C. Look, yep, I see my front gun turret. Yeah, it's going with us. It doesn't have to rotate the full three, uh, 180 to come back around. Pretty darn awesome. Torpedoes reload super quick, 55 second reload. And we are still firing HE. We're going to see if we can start some more fires right here. And let's see here. Columbo is running away. Nope, we got more people. The other Savia is shooting us. And it's okay. We'll try to take as much as we can. Let's see if we can knock out this Columbo. And boom, there he goes. Columbo goes down. And now we're turning away again to dodge the shells from incoming fire from the our counterpart right there and he probably just got it he's probably enjoying it as well notice again here's the downside of this thing i mean it's difficult to push in when your team isn't pushing so you're pretty much kind of that support role if you don't have a good uh upfront uh destroyer or maybe an upfront push from a fellow cruiser or battleship this is not meant to go in and tank or anything that's why you have all the defensive countermeasures such as smoke engine boost and it's and you got to just make sure you play it uh at the right appropriate times again much like a destroyer, you don't want to just go push in there without any support. So I treat it the same way. I, I Again, look at the size of this thing. This is literally a just a bigger destroyer uh, labeled as a cruiser. So I... I play it as such. I mean, I really enjoy this because I'm a destroyer main. And I, for the first time, I'm actually using a cruiser as a destroyer. Uh, this is pretty awesome. So we got another... Dang, where are all these Columbos coming from? My God. Another Columbo, 14 kilometers. Very comfortable for me. Uh, the 13 and a half kilometer torpedoes go out to range. You only get one rack per side. But again, such a quick reload and the turning ability of this thing. You can get both racks just by um, going zigzagging back and right, turning the ship around. And the gun, re the gun range is awesome. I mean, you can see, again, right Right there, 15.2 is a very, very comfortable shot. And even if I don't want to use all three turrets, I still got the back two turrets. It's almost, again, like having a Ragnar strapped to the back of you right there. And look at that. Shots, shots, shots. And shots are out. And we slam on the brakes. And they all miss us right. We're at 2 million, ladies and gentlemen. 2 million potential damage right there. And we are still putting out, dishing out the hate. We are holding this flank as best we can. And uh, th this thing literally is uh, an annoying piece of crap. I mean, I'm telling you, it's going to be the next small end style sh of cruisers. And I think this is, might be a killer battleship. I might have to do a video of showing you how the battleship uh, is becoming obsolete. And I'll show you why. Because we're just going to literally, with this ship in conjunction to a lot of other destroyers and such, and submarines and CVs, I think we might be, you're seeing the cusp and the precipice of actually eliminating battleships out of this game. Uh, not, the, not the sense of like you're going to delete them or anything, but you are literally going to make them obsolete and it, it's just ineffective. There's only a, so much that a battleship can do nowadays with the amount of firepower that's being released from Wargaming and the technology that's advancing. Uh, again, you got toxic ships like the Smolensk and this and Colbert's, and now you got the destroyers that are uh, tier 10. You're starting to see them become so effective that they can just, like I said, you see me play, I literally can just take on a battleship, no problem in a tier 10 destroyer. And I think it's slowly becoming, like I said, obsolete at tier 10, especially now with the given uh, tier 11 super ships nowadays. So really darn crazy. Uh, uh, what is it, Jacksonville, the, the tier 11 super, uh, super rooster? Uh, that thing is literally can hold a flank by itself, and nobody pushes. I've noticed that. Battleships stay in the back when they see a Jacksonville. I mean, I'm telling you. And boom, there goes Minotaur right down there. Way to go, Iowa. At least I was able to shoot somebody. And look at that. 2.7 million potential damage, ladies and gentlemen. That is redonkulous, okay? Uh, for the amount of firepower this thing provides, and the, also the ability to tank that much Dreadnought. Receive at least 120% of damage. 141,000 damage. That's nothing to gawk at. Seven fires. And let's see, here. we were top of the team, and we did nothing. We literally just sat on a flank, and we were still at the top of the team with this match. And we were literally, oh my gosh, that's redonkulous, okay? Uh, 2.7 million, um, we're going to have to take a snapshot of that. That is crazy. We were able to shoot about 81,000 damage in fires, 51,000 damage in just fires alone. Uh, let's take another uh, look at another match that kind of demonstrates the same capabilities. All right, so we have another match right here going on. We don't have carriers. And again, I want to try out the AA on this thing. The AA, I've, I, I'm reading, 
It's not as great as Ragnar. The continuous damage is there. Uh, it doesn't, and then the long range, it only does, you know, trickles here and there. But the medium range is okay. Flak bursts aren't as powerful, but I I'm kind of curious. Like, you would think with the amount of Ragnar guns this thing has, it'd be super darn powerful. It should even be the top of what Ragnar is, but we'll have to take a look at it because Ragnar, I think, is one of the most powerful uh, AA ratings out there uh, that you saw in my previous video, but... Uh, it does better than Holland uh, regarding uh, continuous damage. But let's see. I'm surprised the Sevilla doesn't have the same kind of caliber as Ragnar would. We'll take a look. We'll see how it uh, actually pans out. So right off the bat, we're spotted, which means that some destroyer right there, boom, destroyer spotted. I know he spotted me. Go ahead and pop that radar. We pop the smoke to go in concealment, and we start firing, unloading on him. Now look at the accuracy. Very, very wonky right there. Oh, man, look at that. We love taking hits. And, man, it is deadly. when you. So you, you, I have to refine that tactic right there. If we get spotted, we're going to have to either angle, just stay nose in or angled away. Uh, don't start start turning and showing that broadside because everybody in the first or few seconds and first minutes of the match are literally just aiming and waiting to shoot. So i got to be very, very careful on that. Now, the heal is decent enough to get me some of back of that damage. So uh, I don't build for survivability because I think an extra 4,500 HP is not going to make a difference. I have enough heals. I've got enough kiting ability, enough um, weapon systems to actually uh, mitigate and try to go in defensive mode right here or uh, kind of egress the area. So I think you don't have to build for survivability, honestly. I think I like the, the better reloads. So look at it, everybody's firing at us, man. We're already at the 303,000 uh, 303, uh, in potential damage and still getting shot at right now. We're up to 400 potential damage right there and we are still firing back. We don't, uh, we don't kneel to nobody. So we're going to see if we can keep pumping. Look, nobody uh, wants to shoot at any of our friendly teammates, and that's exactly why I like playing as a short player. I like to draw as much damage as possible. Notice the throttle juking abilities. Everybody's firing at us still, and we are able to pop smoke, go undetected, and people are still firing us. Turn angles are great. Gun angles are great because especially, again, like I talked about, you still got a Ragnar strapped to the back of you, and you can literally retreat and shoot Ragnar, or you can nose in shoot three sets of Ragnar guns. So really darn awesome right there. GK, again. Obsolete. Look at where all the other uh, Battleship players are at. Look at that. Obsolete players right here. GK running back. Musashi running the back. Alsace non-existent. Yoshino retreating the back. This, look, just us being right here literally is a deadly threat because without their destroyer player, their team is completely lost. It almost seems like Battleship and Cruiser players are lost, completely clueless when there is no destroyer player. And that's why I focus on destroyer gameplay so much because I lead from the front so I can lead by example because otherwise nobody's going to push. Nobody's going to do anything. It, they're, they're just terrified. Even my team. Look at my team is still kind of hanging back here in the I and H lines because some for some reason they're terrified. Now, even though my, my Elbing over here is doing a great job going up there, spawning, pushing everybody back, and now it's our role, our turn to push up front as well. And I'm treating this thing like a second destroyer. I got my Elbing up front. Guess what? He's doing his role. He's doing an excellent role. So Dojo Master 666, you are doing an amazing job. And I'm showing this video out because you get a cracking in this video, by the way. So great job on that. Um, but anyways, going back, the power of the destroyer player can literally destroy an entire flank of battleships. So the, I, to me personally, I think the battleship is obsolete. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, we're slowly, you're going to see the videos. We're gonna, I'm going to have to do a video just showing how I can just destroy a whole entire flank of battleships because they're just unable to comprehend or understand the nature of what the game is. Or maybe it's because Wargaming has made it so toxic now that you can't push up in battleships. So it might be a combination of a player skill as well as the mechanics of the game do not support battleship players anymore. Let me know your thoughts about it. What do you think? Do you think that's the case nowadays? Because... I don't see many battleship players pushing for. I mean, back in the day, we had Schlieflins. The Schlieflin was the best secondary game ship in the game, and it really was designed to push. And I love the Schlieflin. It's still one of my favorite secondary ships. Unfortunately, with the advent of all the ships that you're seeing, like me, yours truly here playing, or the Destroyer players, the, the Schlieflins are literally getting melted down just right off the bat. Unless you're pushing with three or four Schlieflins all at once, which is actually fun, by the way. I actually encourage it. But you don't see three or four Schlieffens normally together unless they're in a div and that's planned. And you're pretty much just seeing all these kind of... Look at that. Look at this. Alsace, Musashi, Yoshino. Like way, way, way in the back because of one little guy. I mean, come on. So I think the gameplay for Battleships is just... It's so difficult now. I'm sorry to say. Uh, right now, we are doing a destroyer role. Look, hey, look, you can treat the Svea like a destroyer. And this is why I enjoy it so much because you, it's not a cruiser. It's, it's, you're playing it like a destroyer. 
which is why I like this so much because I'm a destroyer main and I'm going to actually say be the first to go, man, I'm treating this thing like a destroyer. It's so awesome. I got the quick smokes and the radar. I'm good. Uh, if somebody challenges me, boom, I got the, if a destroyer challenges me and wants to push up front, that's why I have RPF. I know exactly where the destroyer's at. I, if he sneaks up on me and I get it detected, boom, I pop the radar, don't see him, pop smoke. And it, it lasts just great enough, long enough for what I need to do with it. And I've got the engine boost as well. So right now, uh, we've got enemy flank uh, is being falling on Charlie's side. So we're going to go spin around. You know, notice the, look at that, torpedo angles are great. Uh, reload's great on the torpedoes. They go out to 13 and a half. I'm, I mean, I'm reaching to their sea line, which is incredible for uh, what I'm supposed to be doing right here. And I, normally, you don't play this as a um, torpedo boat or torpedo ship it's not for that and boom your small lens goes down way to go elbing like i said dojo master doing a great job i'm going to support my uh destroyer player this is a great great i can see this being in divs like you can get this thing this video it paired up with another destroyer this thing would be unstoppable because you got the smokes you got the torpedoes you got the radar you got the engine boost you have everything you need in, in a small little package here in this little destroyer kind of mentality and you're supporting your other destroyer player, you mean you literally can go div up with another store and wreck the entire map. I truly guarantee that's what's going to happen. Uh, so right now, look at the, the gun angles are great too. So I can nose into the threat. The threat currently is off my 11 o'clock right now. So I'm going to nose into it and make sure I don't get um, slapped or torpedoed. Broadside, look, maneuverability is great. You saw my turning ability right there. Very awesome. All right, here we go. We got Elbing. Here's exactly what I'm talking about. You got the Elbing off. My Elbing out front is spotting. I've got the three turret barrel gun in front. Is just a, Dude, this is great. Look at it. My front turret alone can kill this guy, okay? Now, I got to get within range of nine kilometers, which is great. He goes in the smoke, and boom, I pop my radar. Come on, baby. Pop the radar. Yep, pop the radar, he's visible, and he are, he's already killed anyways, and boom, we're undetected, we're inside a smoke. Oh, and guess what? My radar also caught the other gearing that's pushing in. So RPF is now indicating, again, this is why RPF is so incredible. You have to have situation awareness as where all the destroyers are at. And again, he is up front. Normally destroyers, enemy destroyers are in the front of their flank, so you got the RPF typically in, uh, identifies the closest enemy destroyer. So right there, you can see the amount of damage we're pumping into him right there. Uh, okay, we missed that one. Don't worry. Radar is already on cooldown. 47 seconds. It'll be back. I don't want to stay broadside to that gearing. I know he launched torpedoes. You might as well guarantee it. And now here's the firepower of what we can do against cruisers. This is another powerful aspect of the Sevilla right here, guys. This, the destroyer gameplay is great, but the cruiser killer is also awesome. We're already starting fires right there. We're also going to take damage as well. Let's see. We're going to kite away. We don't want to, get, we don't want to get slapped broadside right here by... Like I'm looking at my minimap. Who's got the most potential damage on me? The Slava right there. Yep. He takes a shot at us. Great angles right there. I got my heels. They're back up again. The heels are also uh, quickly reloading too. They're pretty decent for what they do. We're also shooting a lot of HE. Look at that reload. 76 second cooldown on the heels. So we got it great. We started uh, another fire right there. So that is good as well. But Brindisi is firing at us. So we're going to go ahead and fire back at him. But guess what? Our smoke is back. I notice I, the majority of the games I've played with the smokes, I use literally almost all of them because I'm constantly popping smoke. I'm literally firing, dodging, popping smoke, radar. And I'm just repeat, rinse and repeating, rinse and repeating. Constant, just that, that that little game flow right there is just really, really darn effective for what we're doing here. Notice that we are have we do have support. Thank God for the Elbing right there to spot for us, and that helps. I mean, like I tell you, this is going to be crucial. Sorry to sorry, um, uh, Dojo Master. There, you, <laughs> I thought you were stopping, but I I was going to fire a couple of torpedoes right there. Anyways, the smokes don't last too too long. Like I said, they're like daring smokes. Uh, the British line quick smokes right there. So you got to be careful because they do go down. You got to keep your head on a swivel of situational awareness. So, hey, that smoke goes away. But, hey, I had a juicy opportunity to shoot the gearing right here. So we popped the radar. He is spotted for the next 14 seconds, 19 seconds for us. And let's see if we can get a Man, look at all that damage. 2,500 damage into a gearing. That is freaking darn awesome right there. So, yep, we get it all there. Perfect. We take out the gearing, but not after the Brindisi shoots the sap, which we can't really angle against sap. Your sap just destroys everything. Dojo Master gets a crack, and good job on your part right there. Look at that. 851,000 potential damage after doing all that damage and bringing down their team to uh, to a burnt to a crispo. Pretty darn wild, man. And this is freaking awesome. So this game is pretty much one. I mean, we pretty much blasting everybody. Yep, Melbing is just dominating all over the place. The way to go, Dojo Master. And that is the game right there, guys. And uh, we basically win that one outright. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Sevilla. The build will be at the end of the video here as I'm putting up on the screen. And uh, we're going to take a look at it and uh, see how... Uh, how would you build? I actually had two combinations of the build, so 
Take a look at uh, which one you like. I definitely like the RPF. You can definitely build for quicker reload consumables. I still like that situational awareness. That's why I do build for it. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Take a look at the um, you know the builds that I've, I've got in front of you here. Let me know what you think. And as always, uh, it, it is a little expensive. It's in the army for 30,000 steel. So uh, I think uh, we're going to do some more gameplay footage and just watch us melt the entire team with this, th this ship. This thing is the new Smolensk slash uh, everything else like destroyer wise, bigger brother Ragnar. So uh, again, as always, hope you guys are doing well. If you see me out there, make sure you say hi. Hope you're doing well. Until next time, we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Cheers.